Hi everyone and welcome back. I've been using the Canon R7 and the EF 100 to 400 mm lens, the second version for several weeks now. And I have taken thousands of images of birds and also of some smaller subjects. And I'm gonna show you in this video a bunch of images so you can see what kind of image quality you can expect from this setup. I really love this lens on the R7. It performs really well in most scenarios. The eye detection works really well, even in low light. The only issue that can arise when shooting in high continuous mode at 15 frames per second is that there can be noticeable lag, blackout between frames. So anticipating the direction of the movement of your subject is gonna be crucial, key to properly track a bird in flight. If you want to know how I set up my Canon R7 for both stationary and moving subjects, including birds in flight, then you should also check out this video. I have made some minor adjustments since. You can read about those in both the description and the pinned comment of that video. Anyway, let's have a look at those shots now. All right, let's start with some magpie shots. This first one is a backlit shot taken at base ISO. I had to increase the shadow detail quite a bit and then apply noise reduction. You can still see a bit of noise, but the level of detail is exceptional. If I zoom in even further, up to 200%, you can even see the reflection of our house in the backyard. Alrighty. This one was taken at the local nature reserve at the minimum focusing distance. I was approximately a meter away, about 90 centimeters away of this friendly juvenile and the level of detail once again in the eye is tremendous. You can even see all those iridescent colors on the edge of the eyelid. Here's an in-flight shot. I really love the background. The bokeh is beautiful. The catch light is gorgeous as well. And there's plenty of detail in the feathers. I'm really happy with this shot. I hope you guys can hear me because there are plenty of cockatoos outside and they are screeching. Next one. This one had side lighting and once again the eye detection worked flawlessly. Managed to focus right on the eye. It's pin sharp. Beautiful. Okay. Here are a couple more shots. This time these are uh, not of Australian magpies but Magpie larks, they are much smaller. And um, here, I think the ISO was close to uh, 2000. Yeah, it is 2000. So you can see already a substantial amount of grain in the background, but still acceptable. If you shoot at higher ISOs, I recommend you don't go over 1600, 2000. That's where I would draw the line past that it kind of falls apart unless you apply some special noise reduction for example via topaz which has a pretty good um, algorithm to decrease noise levels the pixel pitch is relatively small on these APS-C cameras so you need to be aware of that all right let's move to the next one this is another portrait of a magpie lark a little bit closer you can see a bit more detail in its eye here. I normally use high pass filter and selectively apply sharpening um, on certain parts. For example, on the eyelid, I try not to do it on the iris because then it creates pixelation. Next one, another close up portrait, this time of a male magpie. His name is Logi, he's extremely friendly. We have been uh, feeding him for over a year and uh, he always greets us whenever we appear in his territory um, together with his wife, we call. Beautiful detail once again in the eye. I really love the color of their iris. And you can see that the beard right there, it's so funny. And I think I've got another shot, yeah, just from a different angle or a different head tilt. Shut up, cockatoos, Jesus Christ. And uh, here the focus was even better. And you can even see my reflection right there in its pupil. Beautiful. I wish the background had been a little bit less cluttered and more homogeneous, but 
it's still an acceptable frame. This is uh, of a female, a juvenile female or a young female that I managed to capture in flight from a lower angle. I really love the position of her wings and you can see those claws are quite impressive. I think this one was taken at ISO 5000. I had to up the ISO at that particular shutter speed. Yes, ISO 5000. At f4.5 it was really close and the shutter speed was 2500 of a second. Next one. I really love this portrait because of the color of the background. Just stands out. Gorgeous. I think I missed the focus on this one slightly. As you can see it's not as sharp on the eyelid. But it's still a keeper. Let's go to the next one. Another in-flight shot. Once again, I had to use high ISO at that shutter speed. I really love the colors. And here is another in-flight shot. I think this one was the same subject. And uh, if I zoom in, you can see a little bit of uh, color fringing. I deliberately did not uh, remove that. So just make sure that you apply um, profile correction or do it manually. You can also do that in camera, but I have those uh, Mm, corrections disabled because it might slow down the camera. And here's another uh, backlit shot of the same female that I showed you earlier. I really love this uh, image once again. The uh, level of detail is exceptional. I mean, look at that. We are zoomed in right now at 300% and you can even see the reflection in uh, quite a bit of detail in the uh, iris. All right, let's have a look at some more bird shots of different species. This first one is a rainbow lorikeet that was foraging, destroying the seed pods on our conifer in the front garden. And you can even see the nictitating membrane partially shut or open as it was uh, about to snap another seed pod off the vegetation. I really love the background and the way I managed to uh, frame up the subject in this one. And I think I have a similar shot, uh, maybe here, yeah, of the same um, specimen. And once again, the level of detail is exceptional. I would have been approximately two and a half, three meters away from this uh, lorikeet. You can see amazing level of detail on these tissues or the skin that surrounds the eye and the colors are absolutely amazing. Okay, okay. Here is another subject. This one is a Torresian crow, I believe. If I zoom in, you can see the eye is so amazing. That blue iris surrounding the pupil and um, I think the uh, ISO was yeah below 1000 because the noise level is pretty good. It's not too bad at all. And the detail on the feathers on the plumage is exceptional. If I zoom in to 300%, you can s discern so much detail there. Here's another rainbow orchid, but this one is a juvenile. The feathers are not fully developed. You can see a little bit of a patch there that doesn't have any uh, feathers. I think I had to up the ISO here quite a bit because it was uh, in the shade. Oh, only 500. I thought that it was much higher. I think I had to increase the shadow detail substantially. Yeah, that's why it looks a little bit uh, uh, noisy. This next subject is a common minor, which is an invasive introduced species and they are considered pests. We have way too many in our neighborhood and they uh, unfortunately have an adverse effect on the population of our native bird species and that's a big problem. I had to crop this image substantially because it was flying approximately 15 to 20 meters uh, from me and I wanted to fill the frame. This one is a juvenile, a backlit shot and taken at higher ISO. Uh, ISO 800, oh, not that high, a medium ISO and I had to increase the shadow detail quite a bit. I decreased the highlights so 
the uh, rim lighting is more defined. Alrighty, next one. Here is a noisy miner that was scratching its neck and you can see the tongue sticking out. It looks really funny as it was perched on one leg on the power line. And uh, this is the same species, uh, another specimen in our backyard. It was foraging on the Fijoa tree and the level of detail is amazing once again. You can see so much uh, detail around here and in the feathers, crazy. But 32 and a half megapixel is, is enough, I can tell you, especially after the 1DX Mark II that I have been using, which only has 20 and a half. All right, let's go to our last set of images. These are of little Corellas, a cockatoo species. Let's start with this first image. You can see that this one was eating the seed pods of our conifer as well. They absolutely love it. And if I zoom into 200%, wow. I mean, it looks ridiculously detailed. You can see every little tiny um, bit of that seed pod, even on the tongue. And um, this patch, this bare uh, patch that doesn't have any feathers on. Wow, all those wrinkles and the little crest at the top. Looks really cool. This one was captured in our front yard. Here's an in flight shot. I know that the angle is a little bit suboptimal, but I just wanted to test it. The in flight. Um, capabilities of this camera and I took a whole series of shots from different angles and in different lighting conditions. This one was about to land on the power line. You can hear these Corellas just right now, they are swarming outside. Here this one was landing on a power line once again. I was super close. I think I gotta stop for a moment until they shut up. I was so close, so I couldn't even get the entire specimen within the frame. But if I zoom in, you can see so much detail once again. The focus was spot on right on the eye, deck sharp, nice catch light, plenty of detail in the entire body. And look at those claws. I mean, wow, you wouldn't want to mess with this bird. <laughs> this one was. Um, taken once again in the uh, front yard and um, I used electronic shutter for this one and uh, the eye detection broke just flawlessly. This is another shot of the same series that I just showed you before and uh, I'm really happy with these images. Just crazy detail. Nice. I think this was the uh, same cockatoo. No, no, no. This was uh, another cockatoo on another day. The lighting was a little bit uh, better this time. I potentially could have increased the uh, exposure a little bit more. Mm. It's not too bad. How fascinating is that plumage? I mean, look at all the different types of feathers. Wow. Unreal. I really like this uh, little red patch. Just right next to the eye. <laughs> they are so funny because they absolutely love playing on the power lines and sometimes they even hang off uh, just uh, by their beak. I've got a couple of uh, videos and uh, I will leave links in the description. You should definitely check those out. They are so funny. And here is another one of the same series. It looks as if it was smiling, funny as. Let's zoom in again. <laughs> Crazy little cockatoos. I love them. Yes, the same specimen just perched after the little acrobatics. I really like this shot even though it's not as detailed. I had to crop in quite a bit. It was screeching mid-flight. Okie dokie, another 
in flight shot i think i have to use a little bit of uh, content aware because this one small section was cut off i couldn't manage to get it in the frame and then i just rebuilt that upper part beautiful detail next one not an in-flight shot as it was taking off from the power line in front of our garden another one with different uh, wing position and uh, here are a couple more portraits while they were foraging this one lost that uh, seed pod I mean look at that tongue wow crazy they look like uh, Siamese twins or conjoined twins in this shot <laughs> funny as the lighting was really nice that day nice and soft diffused couple more was a little bit closer here I'm super happy with this uh, camera and uh, lens combo it just works it really does work and the 400 millimeters is enough for me for most scenarios here I think the focus is slightly off back focused I think I love this shot even though the background is pretty cluttered I, I love the uh, feathers I and mean, look at that uh, wing the focus was spot on just flying towards me managed to get the entire subject in the frame which is good and then oh I love this one the wings are fully extended just beautiful really really nice happy with that and the very last shot is just a portrait heavily cropped as it was munching on that seed pod so these were the bird shots and i'm going to show you a few more of small subjects all right in this first shot you can see a yellow antenna black spider wasp as it was perched on the fence in our backyard and you can see even the large humongous abdomen of the black house spider that it was carrying away into its um, nest and these parasitic wasps are so fascinating they use these spiders to lay their uh, lava in and the lava feeds on them here's a cabbage white uh, butterfly or a couple of cabbage whites you can see one blurred out as it was flying and uh, I zoom in you can see the I was in perfect uh, focus I used the eye detection for these subjects as well and in most scenarios it worked quite well but at times depending on lighting conditions it was a hit and miss so sometimes I had to adjust and use even manual focus here's another shot focus is perfect once again and another butterfly was just coming into the frame I wish it had not been cut off at the top but it's still a keeper this one is from a different angle or high angle you can see that huge proboscis uh, sucking out the nectar from this uh, little flower I really love the colors it's just it's beautiful next one is an in-flight shot and just perfect focus right on the eye I was super happy with this shot I wish the background had not been as cluttered but still really nice and here is a shot that I took a couple of days ago of a blue ringtail a very small damselfly they are considerably smaller than a dragonfly approximately six to eight centimeters in length and I captured this one at the minimum focusing distance it wasn't skittish at all usually they tend to fly away this is a cropped image and you can see amazing amount of detail even though this is not a macro lens and the maximum magnification ratio is 0.32x so one third of life-size reproduction but you can still discern quite a bit of detail on this relatively small specimen and here is uh, a last shot of a parasitic wasp once again 
I really love this picture. I captured this one in the backyard. Luckily, it was hovering for quite some time right next to the brick wall, and I managed to grab a few frames. This one was the sharpest. I was super happy with this. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can still see that the wings were uh, blurry. Um, what was the shutter speed that I used? 3200th of a second, f7.1, ISO 800. I really love the metallic colors and iridescence um, of its uh, thorax and that massive eye. Looks amazing and the super long um, ovipositor. So these were the images. I hope you liked some of them. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this lens on the R7, then leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this content and catch you all very soon in the next one.